Now, let's stay in the art scene where life is not without controversy. Boris Lory was an American writer and artist who escaped the Nazi concentration camps during World War II before he founded one of the leading art movements in New York dedicated to social change. Now a new exhibition dedicated to Lori's work has opened right here in Israel, and I-24 News correspondent Maya Magit has the story about the man who inspired a generation of artists and also reveals who inspired him. She's with us. Let's first watch her report, then break it down. Boris Lurie was a founding member of one of the most radical anti-establishment art movements in New York. Born in Leningrad in the former Soviet Union in 1924, most of the artist's family was murdered by the Nazis in World War II. Only Lurie and his father managed to survive the concentration camps. After the war, they moved to the United States, where Lurie quickly became an outspoken critic of American commercialism, politics, and the art market. Now Lurie's work is on display in Israel at the Yanko Dada Museum in the artist village of Ein Hod. Although he escaped the camps, the Holocaust continued to play an important role in Lurie's life. He was there at such an impressionable age, 14 to 18, those four years, that it just stayed with him for the rest of his life. And uh, you can see pictures of his studio and pictures of his home, his apartment in New York. And the man made a great fortune, but he continued to live in a hovel. In New York in the 1950s, Lurie helped establish the No Art Movement, a radical political group which used art to attack fascism, racism, colonialism, and imperialism. The movement went against the grain of the art scene at the time, which leaned towards pop art and abstract expressionism. No Art strove to inject, quote, the subjects of real life into art. He used women's clothing items such as the bra, but instead of inserting a woman's body into his work, he stuck the letters N and O, thereby creating the word no. Or he made an even bolder use of pornographic imagery, which is most often associated with the exploitation of women. But despite his anarchistic views, the artist also held an unlikely political figure in high esteem. I met him when he was in the hospital at the end of his life. And I went into his room, and at the foot of his bed, he had a full life-size portrait of Joseph Stalin. Now, Stalin did more to hurt the Jews than just about anybody in the world. Those closest to the artist say he believed the Russian dictator had saved the world by helping to defeat Adolf Hitler and the Nazis. He said, well, I know he hurt many Jews. He said, but my camp, Buchenwald, was liberated by the Red Army. So for me, he saved my life. He said, I don't know about the rest of the Jews that he killed, but I know for me, he saved my life. Lurie remained socially and politically active until his death in 2008. His dream was to inspire the next generation of artists to follow in his footsteps, creating art that challenges the status quo in the hopes of building a better world. We have Maya Morgit, the reporter of this, um, uh, um, of this story, with us. But before anything else, right now, British Finance Minister Osborne is speaking just before the markets open. This is clearly in an attempt to calm them down. Let's have a listen to what he is saying post-Brexit. In the meantime, and during the negotiations that will follow, there will be no change to people's rights to travel and work and to the way our goods and services are traded or to the way our economy and financial system is regulated. However, it is already evident that as a result of Thursday's decision, some firms are continuing to pause their decisions to invest or to hire people. As I said before the referendum, this will have an impact on the economy and the public finances, and there will need to be action to address that. Given the delay in triggering Article 50, and the Prime Minister's decision to hand over to a successor. It is sensible that decisions on what that action should consist of wait for the OBR to assess the economy in the autumn and for the new Prime Minister to be in place. But no one should doubt our resolve to maintain the fiscal stability we have delivered for this country. And to companies large and small, I would say this. The British economy is fundamentally strong we are highly competitive, and we are open for business. The third and final challenge I spoke of was that of ensuring that Britain was able to agree a long-term economic relationship with the rest of Europe that provided for the best possible terms of trade in goods and services. Together, my colleagues in the government, 
in the Conservative Party and in Parliament will have to determine what those terms should be and will have to negotiate with our European friends and allies to agree them. I Finance Minister Osborne there speaking just before the markets open in Europe, clearly in an attempt to calm them down, and we will know in the next several hours. But Maya Margit with me in studio, beautiful report right there. Laurie, first of all, the Stalin bit was quite surprising. Quite surprising, <laughs> not expected, I have to say. Um, basically, I asked about that several times because I found it very surprising that an anti-fascist artist would support Stalin, but apparently he viewed Stalin as kind of a savior of, during World War II because he, the Red Army marched against Hitler and helped to defeat him, along with the Americans, of course. And, and liberated, I think it was the Red Army also that liberated Auschwitz, that liberated Buchenwald, exactly. that, I mean, that, that, that was the, you know, the spearheading of liberating all those camps. When it comes to his life's work, though, how evident is was his experience, would you say, from just covering this, his experience in World War II, his experience as a prisoner on his work throughout, and throughout his life? I think the Holocaust is a central theme of his work. It's something you can't really escape. There, most of his famous works, or infamous works, I would say, because some of them are notorious, they caused quite a outrage in, during their time when they were exhibited for the first time. Some of them, uh, for instance, showed corpses from the concentration camps along with naked, alongside naked women, because he used a lot of pornographic imagery in his work. So people were really shocked by this juxtaposition of the Holocaust with porno pornography. But, but clearly, you know, made an impact and a prolific life's work in, in many, many ways. Maya, um, we like you so much that we're going to lock you in studio because, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. Ami Kaufman is finally here with the <coughs> viral spiral that is the Web Review, which is what we're waiting for the entire show. <clears throat> what do I like, Yael? Yes. Cats. What? I was right? about to say cats <laughs> wrapped in bacon. Okay. <laughs> yes. Did you know that cats, that, that humans, for example, are not the only animals that have brain freeze? Did oh you know God. that? Did, no, you don't. Was that an interesting <laughs> fact that I just... Cats the, have brain freeze? I have, I those, have who, those who feed cats ice cream would have... Okay. I have video proof of this. The this cats do cats have, brain have brain freeze. freeze. I'm Compilation of cats We're gonna have with to brain see freeze. This. Okay. Yeah, let's take a look. Please. Oh, wait, there you <laughs> Oh my God! Okay, well, I'm waiting for the brain freeze. I'm waiting yeah, for the brain freeze. It's, it's, it is looking. There we go. It's going. One, two, three. <gasps> oh my God! There. <laughs> I cannot believe that happened. He <laughs> totally had. That's going. Like, wait, it's coming. Ah! Okay. I have to what try this. What is this, this excruciating at home. pain? I have to try this at yeah, home. I have to try it as well. You have to. Cat, you have cats. I have a cat. Okay, we're well, trying this. Many, you have how many cats? I have two cats. You have two cats. Yeah, so we're, we're waiting for them. So one of them. Is gonna yeah, work one, with of them one of them is. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're very old. They don't seem to want to like leave this world. Yes. Okay. And, um, this is actually from last week. We didn't get a chance to uh, show it. There was a really dramatic match in the Euro between uh, uh, Iceland and, and uh, Austria, and there was a goal that was made by Iceland like the last in the night in, in injury time, 94th minute, and one of the uh, Icelandic uh, commentators just totally went berserk when he was, uh, you know, uh, broadcasting this goal. Let's hear what he sounded like. Okay. He's totally losing it. Okay. <laughs> that almost sounds like the <laughs> orgasm scene from When Harry Met Sally. It does? <laughs> <laughs> Maya got me. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay, and? Let's talk about some auctions for some reason. I don't and know why. And we have to, I guess. Prince's Yellow Cloud guitar in David Boy's Hell sold for more than $200,000 at an auction. People paid $18,750 $18, for a, Dave, a little lock of, uh, lock David, of, hair? Lock of uh, David Bowie's His hair. hair. Okay. And about uh, uh, and 100 one day we'll be able to clone him via DNA. Maybe. That's a good idea. I'm thinking I don't know. that's the only Some people would be happy about that. Exactly. And uh, uh, Prince's Yellow Cloud guitar sold for $137,000 wow. over the weekend. Yeah. Lots of money. But some people are even more uh, ridiculous, <laughs> as you can see from this. Uh, there's still time to bid on this $97,000 bottle of air from a Stone Roses concert. This oh, is come a on. Stone Roses, a uh, big 90s band, a uh, oh, British 90s okay. band, and they just got like uh, reunited. Yeah. <laughs> I actually know them. <laughs> and they went on tour, reunited. Everybody's really happy. Got a little too excited, I think, because one guy who went to the concert said, I'll just take this little uh, jar, as you can see, right. and, uh, right. and, and put some air in it. It put it on eBay, and, that and, there, sold for and, there's, and there's a real bid, a real bid, ninety-seven thousand dollars. That is ridiculous. Thank you very much. That is ridiculous. Thank you. you took the words out of my. You yes. want to see? Speaking uh, of more ridiculous, yeah, you ready for some please, more ridiculous? Please. Joan Rivers, who passed away uh, recently. Uh, well, not how much? How long has it been now? Like a year? a year? I think it's about a year. Yeah, something like that. So some of her stuff went on auction. Uh, this is a Tiffany and Co. water bowl belonging to her dog. 
uh, called Spike. It was a Yorkie. Sold for fourteen thousand dollars. I, but I'm wondering um, out loud with you, Ami. You know, when I put, please do. You know, when, when, <laughs> when I, you know, when I leave this world and I put, you know, my cat's bowl on eBay, how do you? How much do you think it's going to sell for? I'd pay for that. You'd pay for I'd it. I'd pay you would, at, you'd least pay, 100K. at least hundred k. At least hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> it's actually it's Tupperware. You know, euro. It's, it's Tupperware. <laughs> it's plastic Tupperware. I'd pay hundred thousand uh, sterling pounds. I don't know what that's I'm, worth now these there days. There you go. Right? You know what? I will leave you every piece of bacon <laughs> I have in my um, uh, you know I have in my will. Yes. Let's and end with uh, Hillary Clinton's. Uh, uh, you remember she had this moment uh, uh, where she responded to Donald Trump on Twitter and said, "Delete your account." Delete your account. Everybody and went ballistic. And then um, Elizabeth Warren also. Fought. No, really, delete your account. Yeah. A day later. Yeah. <laughs> delete your. Yeah, exactly. we, we meant it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, now you can. Uh, people are making money off of it. You can. You can buy a, a button. You know these campaign buttons. Great. Or, uh, they've now become a campaign button. Delete your account. Yes, I want one of those. Really? Yeah, okay. And just say, I mean, because Ami Kaufman is the perfect man who will be also going to the um, uh, convention. I'm going to wear those. Yeah, I'm going to buy gonna, them well, at no, the convention. You can bring them over for I'll bring me them Maya. Over for okay. You. Wrapped yeah, in yeah. bacon as we had it. Yeah. Uh, Maya Margate, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Ami Kaufman, what would I do without you? A lot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And do not forget to join us, of course, tomorrow morning. This was I24 News Morning Edition. Stay with the channel for the rest of the day. We'll be back tomorrow.